What was that? It's one of those big redneck trucks. <laughs> <laughs> that guy say I'm louder than everybody else. <laughs> is it is it about to cook grass? No. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, probably about to f their sister. Hello, everyone. It's Frank and Darren here at the Slaughter Lamb Podcast, and today we're discussing on a quick fire episode our shocking moments in cinema. Let's see how it goes. Sure. Okay, so my first uh, shocking moment in cinema comes from the movie The Departed. Now, it's at the time where, mm -hmm. um, towards the end, where, where Billy, played by uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, is arresting Colin Sullivan, uh, who's played by Matt Damon. And it's discovered that Matt Damon was the mole for Jack Nicholson and caused Martin Sheen to die. And he's taking him down from the rooftop, arresting him, bringing him down the elevator where basically everybody gets shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a complete ambush, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah. it's a shocking moment. And I'd never seen the original, so I wasn't expecting it. Is it Infernal Affairs, the original, I yes. think it was, wasn't yep. it? I'd never seen that, and so it was a complete shock to me when, you know, half of Hollywood got wiped out in like... <laughs> in less than a minute. Yeah. But then, at the end, the person who everybody hates in this movie gets their upcomings. With, yeah, little, with, with little symbolism, you know, crawling across the railing of the outside hmm. of his apartment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But that but you like you but like you just said all that whole just for one minute it was like, "Oh my god. What? Another one? He's dead too?" <laughs> <laughs> I've just sat through 3 hours of this for for everybody to get wiped out yeah, in one I, I, swoop. I watched a horn uh, a horny coked up Jack <laughs> trading <laughs> secrets with the Chinese, you know, to uh, you know, for everybody dying at the end. And nobody's actually. It's not. It's not really a happy ending, is it? No. No. But it's, no, it's, it's all no. But it's a Martin movie, so go figure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no I haven't happening. seen it for. Yeah, I haven't seen it for oh, since it came out. I think I've only seen it the once, and I do remember that. Isn't there, there like a scene in the cinema with Jack Nicholson and a dildo or something like that? Yeah, he he owns waving the, it around or something. He owns an adult uh, uh, movie theater and. You hear this guy in a trench coat go, oh, give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he turns around and he, to uh, Matt Damon's character and it's this big, thick tildo he has in his pants showing it to him. You know, and, uh, yeah, that was a funny oh, part. <laughs> I, never, I knew I shouldn't have mentioned that bit. I was trying to fill a gap there and um, <laughs> oh, I just got into sex you. straight away. Yep. yep. Okay, but... <laughs> Your 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 first shocking moment that doesn't have to deal with a with, with a fake appendage. <laughs> so my first one is um, a movie from I think it was 1998, and it was Ed Norton in um, American History X, and it's the curb stomp scene, which just the the thought of it makes me feel ill. He Not plays the one this from uh, the Honeymooners. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not that Ed Norton. <laughs> No. Um, yeah, Ed Norton uh, plays uh, Derek v Vine. Is it Vineyard or Vineyard? I can't remember now. Uh, Derek Vineyard, I think his name is. Who's this, you know, throughout the movie, we see that he has all these. He's a, he's a neo Nazi, basically. But we never see to what extent. Um, we get these kind of flashes of the tendencies that he has. And um, his brother, who's played by Ed Furlong, wake, wakes him up one night to tell him that somebody's trying to steal the car and he just basically loses his shit he he get he has his gun he pulls his gun out and um he shoots one guy he shoots a, a second guy in the car but the first guy that he shot is still alive and lying in the street and he gets his head pulls it back and asks him to um to to put to rest his teeth on the curb and you get this close-up shot of, of this poor guy's teeth. Um, the noise of his teeth scraping on the curb as he's resting them there uh, before this kind of fatal blow that that, um, that that Derek dishes out is 
it's just horrible. It's like it's that huge, it's that kind of nails on the chalkboard, you know. There's something about teeth and nails and, and nose hair and things like that that, that <laughs> makes me feel hair. really queasy. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so that's my first one. It's it's that curb stomp from American History X. It's a great movie, um, but you know, a, a really unsettling watch and and a, and a sequence that that has just kind of stayed with me for the last sort of 23 years or so. Um, but anyway, we'll move on. Your next one. I didn't think about that uh, scene until now. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> my next shocking moment would have to be the ending to the movie Identity with uh, John Cusack and Ray Liotta. Mm. Um, dealing with, you know, a, a guy who uh, has several personalities in his head. And... The doctors are trying to get the right personality to stay with him. So the only way they're able to do that is by creating in his head this hotel. With this hotel being surrounded by a storm where nobody can get out. And all these different personalities are being killed off one by one. So everyone thinks it's Ray Liotta's character. You know, because he's considered... I think that one personality he is, is a, has is a murderer. And it winds up that one the last survivor of this personality is a woman a very nice sweet mm. gentle woman but it turns out that the real killer is like this 10 year old boy who savagely yeah. murders everybody and he finally kills off the last personality where mm. this where the uh, now the the inmate or you know the convict who has these personalities just left as this sadistic murdering little boy and winds up escaping and killing the people who are trying to help him. A shocking ending. Everyone's like, oh my it God, is. that little kid? Jesus Christ. It's a really s smart little film, I think. And and again, and one that I haven't seen since it, it came out. I think it's James Mangold, isn't it, who directed mm -hmm. it, um, who's currently making the Indiana Jones movie. I think it was one of his first films, maybe even his first film. What I remember first watching it and, and thinking... My God, the slasher film's back. You know, it's, it kind of has those sort of vibes, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, but then it, it, it sort of becomes more psychological as the movie, you know, presses on. But um, yeah, yeah, pretty shocking ended in, ending indeed. Yeah, good choice. Good choice. Thanks. I'd totally forgotten about that film. All right, your, uh, your next one. So I'm not going to reveal the shocking part of this next one because I think it's it's one of those films that people need to find out for themselves if they haven't seen it. I think it is. It's probably um, uh, famous within the US. Maybe some some of the kind of younger um, watchers of the channel may not have seen it or know what the, the shocking moment is or the twist. Actually, the moment is probably not that shocking these days, but I think... 30 years ago, I think we're 31 years, uh, 30, yeah, 30 years ago when this came out, everybody that saw this was, was, was shocked by one, one moment in the film. Uh, and it's, the, it's the crying game directed by Neil Jordan. Um, and it, look at you smirking. A good, good, look movie. At smirking. good movie. <laughs> it is a good movie. It is a good movie. And it's, 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 it concerns, um, uh, an IRA volunteer called Fergus, who's played by Stephen Ray, and he kidnaps a British soldier in Northern Ireland during all the, the troubles over there. Um, this soldier's called Jody and, and is played by Forrest Whitaker, a really young Forrest Whitaker, who's got quite a terrible um, British accent. I remember one scene when he's being grilled and he's asked where he's from, and he, he in the worst British accent, he says, I'm from Tottenham. Um... <laughs> But the movie, I mean, don't let that bother you. The movie is actually really good. And it, Fergus watches over um, Jody, you know, while while he's imprisoned. And they, they kind of form this relationship. Uh, and he, he tells um, uh, Fergus, does Jody, about his girlfriend who lives back in London. And that should anything happen to him, he should, he should contact her. Uh, and the girlfriend's called Dill. Fergus actually goes to seek her out and the movie then switches to become a romance so it starts off as this kind of IRA drama and then it becomes this kind of this this romance um and I'm going to leave it at that I think that people should find out for themselves what the twist is of this 
of this movie. It's a movie that discussed a lot of themes that were not discussed at the time, and are probably, I'd say, quite openly discussed now. But because it was one of the original movies that kind of handled certain topics, it was quite shocking at the time. And seeing this movie with an with a cinema full of people, the audience reaction when the when this kind of twist moment happens was incredibly audible in the cinema that I was in. And every single person, I think, had a different reaction. Uh, and some of them, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. Because a few laughters, them, maybe. Yeah, there was, yeah, yeah there, were, there were people Little laughing. Giggles. But yeah, yeah, there was, there was, there was a real mixed response to, to what happens in the film. Um, but I don't want to give it away. I want people to, to watch this movie and, and, and find out for themselves because it, it is a great movie and won uh, uh, quite a few Academy Awards at the time as well. It's very, it was taboo at the time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. It's, it's, it is, it, I would say The Crying Game is probably granddaddy of all movies that are based upon this theme. Check it out, The Crying Game. So my next one deals with the history of World War II, I guess through the eyes of a boy who's the son of a colonel, more or less, from the from the Nazi party. And it's called The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. And this boy of this colonel becomes friends with this kid that's in striped pajamas behind a fence wall. I mean, everybody knows it's a concentration camp. Uh, they strike up such a good friendship that they want to meet with each other and actually play with each other, more or less, as much as they can. To the point where the colonel's son, who was in charge of this camp, winds up changing his outfit to match the boy in the concentration camp. And for those who haven't seen this movie, it is a gut-wrenching scene and a shocking moment at the end where they are so close and, and are huddled together that something happens that causes the colonel and her and his family to just start being beside themselves in a mistaken identity that nobody's actually safe ever from the situation that it's in. I mean, the movie is, is, is I think, of, uh, at least more than a decade old. But the ending is so shocking and so sad that you can't help but feel something for both parties. Mm. For both. Even for the family of this Nazi colonel and the people in this camp. It's a, it's a shocking yeah. moment. So, yeah, the boy in the striped pajamas for me is, is one of the shocking moments in cinema. Definitely. Especially anything dealing with kids. I am aware of it and, and how devastating of a movie it is. I, I never knew why. You know, I'll have to check it out. It's something that, for some reason at the time, and I do watch movies like that when, when the time of year comes around that, that all these kind of Academy films are released. But it was like Schindler's reason, List, you know, another shocking, the little girl with the red jacket, yeah, yeah. the only thing that stuck out. You know, it's just, yeah. it's the movies like that. I, I agree with you. Yep. And it, yeah, it, it, it passed me by, but I am, I'm, I'm well aware of it. And I'll, I'll definitely check it out. I'll definitely check it out. It just, it just also goes to prove that no matter how many differences we as adults have with each other, the youth and all our children don't see that until we teach them it and they grow up to learn how to hate. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, children from different, um, it's been proven that children from different, you know, countries, you know, races and, and religions, all that, all they, they don't talk about anything. All they do is play with each other. Hmm. It's, 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 yeah. it's a message right there. But okay, yeah. your third, uh, you know, we'll, we'll bring into your next hot, happy, shocking moment. <laughs> is, you know. I'm going to lift the mood at the end because okay. uh, <laughs> I've got two left. Um, my third one is um, is a movie that I watch without fail every year, and it's The Long Good Friday. Gangster classic. Yeah, uh, 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 British gangster classic. Uh, some of um, the people that, that, that tune into this channel will have seen it, I'm sure. I'm sure um, Steve Goldstone would have seen it and Colin Murdy would have seen it and, you know, um, some of the some of the British guys that, that, that check us out. Bob Hoskins, I think the movie came out in 1980. He's a, a gangster in, in London's West End who gets caught up in uh, with the IRA again and the Mafia uh, in London and, and has and has 
a devastating long Good Friday where his property's blown up, his friends are killed um, because of some of the, the shady characters that he's getting involved in uh, with. Um, there's, a, there's a moment towards the end of the film where he discovers that one of his closest confidants has kind of sold him out and he absolutely loses it. And it's a guy, an actor called Derek Thompson, who plays a character called Jeff. Those, uh, again, for anybody that's British that watches the channel, you you know this guy as Charlie from the TV show Casualty. Um, and he sold out um, Hoskins, and Hoskins attacks him with a glass in the neck, stabbing him repeatedly um, in a, um, in a, I think it's on a boat. That's right, it's on a boat. Uh, and... It's an incredibly violent scene, and, and a, a, a scene that in the, I guess in the late seventies, early eighties, that you, you didn't really see much of. Uh, you know, the violence was so strong that I was kind of like, Jesus Christ, this is this is tough stuff. And even today, it's tough. Uh, he goes right for the the jugular as well, and it's squirting out everywhere. And yeah, a shocking moment. Uh, in one of my all-time favourite movies, The Long Good Friday. And I shall be watching it again around Easter time next year. Uh, <laughs> fun fact, one of, I think it's Pierce Bronson's first movie. Pierce Brosnan, yeah. Bronson? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's him too. Uh, before he did Remington Steel. Yes. Uh, he was, he was yeah, quite yeah. the heartthrob and uh, he, was on the, uh, he was on the Irish side. That's right. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but for those of you who it, it it is very British, you know. If if anyone who wants to watch this is used to something, you know, like The Departed or The Untouchables or Goodfellas, it's not that type. It's nothing like Casino or anything like that. And tell you the truth, I think it's more, I, I guess, more realistic than mm. all these Hollywood gangster movies. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's really raw. It's really rough. I mean, it rockets along. You know, it's not a slow burn at all. It, it, it from the moment the movie starts, the the devastation on this in this one day that this 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 London gangster has kicks off with somebody yep. getting murdered, then something blows up, and then more people are murdered, and he has to call all the gangsters in and to find out who's doing all of this. And little does he know that there's you know larger organizations that could just squish him and um, that are behind it all and yeah it's um it's a it's a fascinating film it's a, a terrific film and one that as i said i i crack out every year i, I agree um my final one is the korean version of old boy from uh 2013 uh or is it 2003 one of those dates um uh, the whole movie is just you know Korean blood and guts. It is. <laughs> but it's not the blood and guts that are shocking about it. The, sh the shocking part, let's, let's just say, is uh, incest. And I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> 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 because he, this guy's been locked up for, I think, over a decade. Close to it. 15 years. And all of a sudden, you know, his tormentor, his jailer, just lets him out. And he's looking for revenge, and he gets some of it. And uh, his tormentor gets kind of like the last laugh by having uh, this guy commit incest, unbeknownst to him. <sighs> <laughs> if you're not, most people are not, when they see this, they're not like, oh, my God. They're like, ew. <laughs> Darren, if you find out that, you know, the people you've been copulating with throughout your life or related to you in some way <laughs> either you throw up or you break down and just cry which you know if people watch watch the korean version of uh, of old boy it's 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 shocking <laughs> towards the end Woo. i'll leave it at that i i have seen it a long time ago i think it was 2003 if i remember right i've not seen the remake uh, how does it compare? Because oh, apparently the remake's really bad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The Koreans do it a little bit more. Well, the one with Josh Brolin does it a little bit more subtle, right? <laughs> but it's it's the pain that for some reason the 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 actors in the the, the first one show such emotion mm. that make it 
you know, real gutting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. J- James crying or anything like that is just really like, all right. That's a shocking moment for me where you find out that. Oh dear! So I, I thought I'm going to have to I'm going to have to raise this a little bit more now. I think we'll just go for a really easy one that everybody knows and that everybody loves, and that is the first time we see Bruce in Jaws. Um, oh, a, a terrific moment. <laughs> A terrific moment, but incredibly shocking. In fact, there's, there's, you could pull Jaws apart and say there's three or four shocking moments. There's no in incest film. in this movie, folks. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So, so yeah, so Roy Schneider, or Schneider as Frank calls him, is chumming away. And, uh, Good Jersey and the shark, boy. <laughs> the shark raises its head out of the water incredibly quickly and scares the absolute living hell out of Roy Schneider. Um, and it's that, that at that moment they realize that the, the the three men in a boat isn't enough to to take on this beast. And despite Brody's warnings to Quint, he still wants to go for it uh, and and try and and try and take it down. But yeah, it's such a memorable moment and one of those uh, iconic shots that you see so many times when anybody does any sort of historical film presentation or or or, or real or, or something like that with snippets of movies over the years you always see that moment when jaws comes out of the water for the first time um so yeah so i thought i'd park that there at the end so we didn't end on somebody getting their throat slit somebody accidentally screwing one of their um family members <laughs> or uh, <laughs> Or Ed Norton smashing someone's brains in on the curb. I, I agree with you, Jaws. Is that that whole part, you, I wait for that moment, and every time I see Jaws, it, it shocks me still. Yeah, because because yeah. it, it the shark looks real. You know, I don't care what anyone says. And I love the three different characters. You know, Brody, his his whole thing is about survival. Quint is based upon revenge. And uh, Hooper's all about research. It's three different personalities, all with different, um, I guess, agendas for this shark. And yeah. I just love, you know, famous quotes, you know, you're going to need a bigger boat. But that cigarette dangling from his mouth from <laughs> from the back of the boat all the way to the front is still there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and him just staring at the water. <laughs> it's perfect. It's just he didn't turn around and run. He was just yeah, yeah, backing yeah. up. It was it was great. It was great. I'm it's glad the shock you, on his face, isn't it? It's <laughs> I'm glad you ended it on that because if I, like you said, if I had to deal with more, you know, death, destruction, and and family fucking, it would <laughs> <laughs> we would have to wash our mouth and eyes out. <laughs> Nothing okay. for you today, Michael. Nothing about <laughs> No, no, no. We will get back to Michael soon. Please, folks, um, the support again over the last um, couple of months has, has been amazing. We've really, you know, got some great figures and, and, and a hell of a lot more subscribers. As I said before, it's it's really starting to build now. Um, we'd really appreciate it if those of you have who've not subscribed to us could could subscribe just hit the button in the corner down there or underneath frank somewhere um and yeah yeah we'll we'll be bringing out more content soon i think we're, we're gonna get back to our cool cruel summers episodes really soon i've got the next two weekends tied up with with various things um, so I think we should be back in a roundabout just over a fortnight with the next episode of that. But it, we are going to we are going to stick out some of these shorter episodes in the meantime. Um, we'll have something uh, uh, next week. Uh, we'll, we'll try and put two of these out of week um, before we get back to Cool Cruel Summers. So uh, we're looking forward to doing that. And I think hopefully Dave McRae is going to join us for our final episode, uh, 1989. Yep, so, we got we got the two two years left, which means you know the season of our summer is going to be coming to an end, and we're going to start getting into the fall. Where Darren and I are probably going to be talking about Halloween leading up to Halloween Kills' release. We're not going to. I don't think we're going to be doing rankings or anything like that. I think we we got something different planned hmm. for the franchise. Um, something that probably nobody has discussed, or the ones that we follow haven't discussed at least. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're, we're still working out some of the kinks, uh, but 
We'll see you guys next time on a couple more quick fires. And until then, stick to the roads. And the best of luck. <laughs>